This seems a little bright. Dun 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 Hey guys, what's up? This is Cody Miller coming at you with yet again another video. So today we're actually going to be modifying this fifth gen iPod. Now this is a fifth gen. In fact, this is a fifth gen 30 gigabytes. And it's apparently also been customly etched by Crystal Royales. I don't know who that is. I don't care. Um, I got this on eBay for I think it was $30. But yes, so I'm going to be modifying this with the SD card mod, which is where you replace the internal hard drive with an SD card. Um, as you can see, this one is actually working. Um, typically, people only do this mod once uh, they have a broken iPod. But in my particular case, I will actually be doing it to this working one. Um, so I've done this to quite a few 5th gen iPods now. This is the third one that I'll be doing this mod to. Um, the other two were different. Those were for other people. This one is actually going to be my personal 5th gen iPod. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a quite a few mods to it. I plan to make future videos on it. Uh, one of them I want to do is the Bluetooth mod. I'm also going to be f swapping out this faceplate because you can see it's a little scratched. And I plan to also uh, vinyl wrap the back of it, but I want to keep the original stainless steel, even though it's really beat up and has etching I don't want. I don't want to be putting any Chinese knockoff steel, but I am going to be vinyl wrapping it. But those are for other videos. Today we're only worried about the hard drive. So the way that I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be using this. This is an iFlash Solo. It retail for about $10. And um, basically, you just put an SD card in here. I've already thrown one in here. This is a 64 gigabyte SD card. I've already put the cushion pad. Now, this is just very, fairly simple. You just pop the SD card in there, and it comes with some cushion pads. You just put them on. I've already done that for the simplicity of this. So to do this, you'll probably want this kit. I got this on Amazon for five. I think it was like eight dollars. Um, it's just the iPod opening kit. I've used it to open a couple. Um, the only thing I'm going to be using with this one, though, is just this, since I intend to replace the front panel and the uh, metal plate anyway. I don't care if it gets a little scratched up. So I'm just going to be using this. But in normal circumstances, you'd be using like these to open it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that anyway, or basically just the general overview. But I'm going to be showing you the way that. I open these. So to open one of these up, generally you would take something like this, and put it in here, pry apart this. You just want to pull this little metal lip up and away. Kind of like that. You can see how it's kind of opening up a little bit. And then you would just take the next tool and you would just put it in here and you would just slowly start working your way around. You're just putting it in the 30 pin and pulling it apart. But the way that I generally open them is I just take right here and I just shove it kind of back and down the side. And once it's in there, you can see that it's starting to pull apart. You just, just lift out. And it's actually just fairly easy. The one downside to this is that you can bend the metal housing. But I mean, this is just so much simpler to open. Just pull apart this way. Um, it takes a lot less time. But yes, uh, you can scratch the iPod a lot more easier. But there's really no like huge downside to it. So once you've done that, the next step is you're gonna see here where the bottom of the 30 pin is. You're gonna turn it a little bit to the right, and right here you can see if you lift up on this a little bit, you'll see this little tiny ribbon cable right there. This is actually your power. So before you do anything else, you want to remove this. Just note that this isn't the only wire connected. There's another one. You can see it kind of attached back there. It's just connected to the back of this. And you actually have to pull the hard drive, this thing, out before you can get to it. But first, we clearly need to remove this. Now this is actually super simple. Just set the case a little bit to the side. If you look here, you'll see this little brown thing that it's connected to. So just take your 
pry tool. I'm just gonna reach in behind it. And you're just gonna pull up on it. You're not gonna be pushing it this way or any other way. You're just gonna be trying to pull it up and out. Well, not out, you just wanna pull it up. And you'll see it came up a little bit. Just gently pull it out. And then once you've done that, you can then just lay this open kind of like that and it looks like someone's already opened this before because there's like a little sharpie signature in there or maybe that was the developer I don't know I've never seen that on the other ones or I may have never paid attention lip laying that aside like a book and then I'm just gonna come right here take the hard drive and you're gonna roll it downward alright so here on the bottom of the hard drive we have where the ribbon cable is connected and it's actually kind of fragile you want to be very careful with it as you can see this ribbon cable is very small I mean this is my finger compared to it so we gotta be very careful we're just gonna take this little black piece right here we're gonna flip it up like that you can see how it flipped up just flips up like a hinge and then you can gently pull the ribbon cable off being very careful not to like put too much force or like twist it in any weird way. All right, so now that we have the hard drive out, we can flip this around and I'll show you how this connects. Now, the first time I installed this, I actually installed this upside down. So I put it in here like this. Um, this particular unit does not install like that. This one actually installs facing upwards like this. So you're gonna have the SD card facing the back of the device and this cushion here will actually be pressing up against the metal back plate to keep it from rattling and in the instructions it recommends that you put this foam piece over top of the SD card just to keep it secure so it's not like popping out because it would be very unfortunate if it pops out and you have to take it back apart but this is really good adhesive I think this is made by 3M so this is not going anywhere um, the only time I've had to take one of these off, it was super on there, and it did not like coming off. The way that this actually lays in here is this is actually designed to the shape of the iPod, if you can see right there. This little metal bracket, it actually fits right in there. This little groove right here actually allows slack for the ribbon cable here, and these two feet actually grab onto the bottom of the frame. It's really well designed and really well thought out. What we're just going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to make sure that the same flap that we flipped up on the other one, we're just going to make sure that it's in the upwards position and we're going to slide the ribbon cable just gently on top of it just like that and it should seat with no issue. It might take a couple of tries to get, for you to get it right, but don't worry too much about it. And then I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to flip it back down. And sometimes there's a little bit of resistance. Just don't try to force it if it doesn't want to go down, but there is a little bit of resistance there. And then just make sure it's firm in place. And then you're just going to sit it down. And it'll fall, as I said, right into that metal bracket. So it's actually, it's not going anywhere. It's very well designed. I really like the way it's set up on this. It's very, very nice. It doesn't interfere with any components. They did a really good job. And the only thing we have left to do is plug this little ribbon cable back in. So we're just gonna drop it in there ever so gently using our tweezers. Tweezers really help. And once it's in there, we can take our pry tool, we can just push the brown lock that we pulled up back down like that. And now, this is actually done. We can just snap it back together. And it is now good to go. Alright, so now that we've done that, all we gotta do is we gotta turn it off hold. And then we can power it on. And as you can see, it's going to tell us to connect to our computer to use iTunes. Um, the reason it's going to tell us this is because 
there's no operating system installed on the SD card. So the simple solution for that is to really just plug it into iTunes like it says and iTunes will come up and it will say that you know the iPod is corrupt and it needs to be reformatted. Okay, so here we are in iTunes. We're just going to go ahead and plug in the iPod and now we'll see everything pop up. You'll also notice that the iPod will say do not disconnect. So, as you can see right here, it's told us that we will have to restore the iPod. So, we'll just click restore iPod and this will reinstall the operating system or install it onto our new SD card. All right, and now it says welcome to your new iPod. And that's pretty much it. Now we can sync it with iTunes. All right, guys, so as you can see, it's fully functional and working. Just as a final verification, you can see that it's reporting a 59.4 gigabyte hard drive with 43.9 available instead of the 30 gigabytes that's on the back. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, have a good one.